Well, here is my brother's 1998 Buick Park Avenue. Unfortunately, it's not an Ultra. It does not have the supercharged engine, but we can't all be winners. Um, yeah, she's pretty filthy. I don't want to even open up the trunk, but leather interior, which he hates because you know I stick to it, and it, it's not as comfortable. But hey, runs good. Uh, I got it in here today. I'm gonna put brakes in it because when I had the uh, wheel off to do the wheel bearing, I noticed that the brakes were shot. So I better go ahead and get started on that. Let me get a little picture of the front of it for you. He put a little dinger in that door, and I think he had a little dinger up front. Yeah, there it is. That's where he hit a deer. I think he hit a deer there too, or a deer hit him. Whatever. It's kind of rusty back here, but. It gets them back and forth, so can't complain. Well, this is a pretty straightforward job. I got the wheel off to show you a little bit. Uh, you've got a 15 mil uh, bolt right here. You undo that and you pull it out. It just pops out like that. Uh, it's a slide pin, so make sure you grease it before you put it back in. And uh, if I remember right, you should just be able to pry this part right out without uh, taking that other bolt off. I'm going to go ahead and try it. Um, if I remember right, that's how you do it. But we'll see in a minute here. Well, I ended up taking them both out because uh, I think I pulled the wrong one to make it easy. I pulled the top one and the bottom one should have been pulled out to bring it up. So I said forget it and I took them both out. Now as you can see, the inside pad here is uh, pretty well worn. And uh, the outside one has got more than enough, so that tells me my caliper is not sliding back and forth. So I'm going to replace the brakes and the pads, and then go ahead and lube up those pins again and make sure it's going back and forth before I uh, put it all back together. Well, now that you've got the uh, caliper out, you've got to push this piston back. And you can use anything from a big channel locks to a C-clamp or, you know, whatever you want, really. But I picked up this little tool for, like, 20 bucks. It's got, a, you know, a bunch of different pieces. Just makes my life easier. I don't have to, you know, wrench on it to get it to, get it to uh, go back in. So I like it. So I'll push that in, and we'll get some new pads in there. Well, as you can see, I've got the uh, new pads in. And a uh, good thing to note that they are different. You'll have two that have this little wear indicator on them and two without it. So you put uh, one with the wear indicator and one without on each side. That way you'll have an indicator on each wheel. So when it goes, when it starts to screech, you'll know your brakes are bad. So now I just got to pop that caliper back on there and tighten her down. She should be good. Now it's very important after you do brakes to pump them before you go anywhere because the car will not stop until they're pumped. So I'll do the other side and I'll be all done. Sweet. Well, I figured since I was out here I'd show you this. This is a little, I think it's an old computer desk or part of one found in my brother's room. Uh, and we found that when we cleaned it so I brought it out here and added a couple of shelves to it. Now i got a place to put all my, uh, all my car manuals. I got a couple of transmission pieces for bookends. Sweet. Oh, hey. Well, I need that. <coughs> Goes to my transmission. If I should ever decide to put it back together. Well, I figured I'd just share that. And uh, Buick's all done now. Stops good. No more screeching when he hits the brakes. Perfect.